Hello and welcome. In this video, we will understand the function of describe geometry task in the watertight geometry workflow. We will also discuss four basic user inputs required in this task, which define the nature of imported geometry. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. After importing the geometry and generating the surface mesh, the next step is to describe the geometry and create regions to prepare the model for volume meshing. The describe geometry task defines the computational model by specifying the type of import geometry, executing necessary subtasks and by creating regions. Upon clicking the describe geometry task, the user is prompted with four inputs in the properties section. In this lesson, we will take a closer look at each of these four inputs. Under the geometry type, there are three options that describe the type of geometry imported into the workflow. That is only solid, only fluid, or both solid and fluid. Using these options, Fluent determines the type of volumetric regions that need to be present in the final computational model. To understand how each option might apply, let's look at different scenarios. If the geometry contains only solid regions and the fluid regions must be defined by extracting the fluid volume, then the geometry consists of only solid regions option should be selected. For example, this option should be used to extract fluid domain for simulating flow through this heat exchanger geometry. In certain cases, such as simulating the heat transfer through a heated metal rod with convection boundary condition applied to the walls, there is no need for extracting fluid domain since only the solid domain is simulated. For such cases, the only solid option must be used. When there is only fluid regions in the geometry, then the geometry consists of only fluid regions option must be selected. For example, if the fluid domain has already been extracted at the CAD creation phase, then only fluids option must be selected during meshing. However, Boundary conditions like no slip, convection, etc. can be assigned on walls depending on the modeling requirements to include the effects on the solid. Finally, you can select the geometry consists of both fluid and solid regions and or voids option when both fluid and solid regions are defined at the CAD level itself. For example, while performing the conjugate heat transfer analysis for cases like heat exchangers, as shown here, this option must be selected when solid regions of the heat exchanger are defined along the fluid regions of the working fluid. Also, select this option if there are any void regions in the model. A void region is a dead region or a pocket in the domain which does not participate in the physics and is not transferred to the fluent solver. Now that we have understood the geometry type, let us discuss the next user input which deals with capping of openings for eventual fluid domain extraction. For cases where the geometry type is set only to solids or solid and fluid, the user is prompted with a question, will you cap opening and extract fluid region. This option should be set to yes if fluid regions need to be extracted. For example, here we have a solid model geometry and we intend to simulate flow through the body. First, set the option to yes. This will insert the enclosed fluid region subtask in the workflow. Since a region is defined by an enclosure of meshed surfaces, any openings in the geometry must be capped 
or covered to define the fluid region, which is done in the enclosed fluid region's capping task. For capping, the surface that surrounds the opening must be used. This creates a meshed surface that covers the opening with sizing functions, same as that of the surrounding surface. The capping surfaces along with the solid body form the boundaries of the enclosed fluid region. Let us now understand the third user input which deals with fluid-fluid boundary. In models that have multiple connected fluid regions, fluid-fluid boundary refers to the interface shared by the two fluid regions. The option change all fluid-fluid boundary types from wall to internal is used to check whether or not you want fluent to convert all fluid-fluid boundary types from wall to internal. By default, fluent meshing treats the fluid-fluid boundary as wall. If the option is set to no, then there will be no flow allowed across the fluid regions. However, if the model physics is such that fluid is supposed to flow across these regions, select yes to convert the boundaries to internal. Please note, name selections that include the word wall are excluded from this conversion. In case the fluid-fluid boundaries are not assigned any name selections, then Fluent will automatically assign the default boundary type. However, if name selections are necessary to be assigned, then either assign name selections to all fluid-fluid interfaces that are not walls beginning with the word internal or do not include the word internal in any name selections and select yes in the change wall to internal in the described geometry. Do not do both. Name selections with the word internal will not be assigned as wall even if the option is set to no. Name selection will override this option. Now, let us discuss the next and the final user input which deals with shared topology. In a multi-body part, when the shared topology is not enabled, bodies that are connected to each other do not share the faces at the interface. When surface mesh is generated in such cases, overlapping surface meshes are generated at the interface. The recommended practice is to perform shared topology at the CAD creation phase before importing the model into Fluent. In cases where that might not be possible, the apply shared topology task in Fluent can be used. In the latter case, when a multi-body part is imported in the watertight geometry workflow and you set the do you need to apply shared topology option to yes, apply shared topology subtask is inserted into the workflow. When shared topology is applied, the adjacent bodies share the face common to each other. The shared face is remeshed to have a common non-overlapping conformal mesh. So to summarize, in this video, we understood the significance of the described geometry task in the watertight geometry workflow and discussed the basic user inputs required. We discussed how and when to select the geometry type and the details regarding enclosing the fluid domains and when it is applicable. We also touched upon the significance of fluid-fluid boundary and applying shared topology. That brings us to the end of our lesson.